People do not like to hear that they're wasting their lives on Facebook. You know, people are unpredictable, and so we want to psychologically figure out how to manipulate you. The Federal Trade Commission has confirmed it is investigating Facebook's privacy practices in the wake of the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Mr. Zuckerberg, would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Um, uh, no. If you've messaged anybody this week, would you share with us the names of the people you've messaged? Uh, Senator, no, I would probably not choose to do that publicly here. I think that may be what this is all about. Your right to privacy the limits of your right to privacy, and how much you give away in modern America in the name of, quote, connecting people around the world. A question, basically, of um, what information Facebook's collecting, who they're sending it to, and whether they ever ask me in advance my permission to do that. Is that a fair thing for a user of Facebook to expect? We didn't take a broad enough view of our responsibility, and that was a big mistake. And it was my mistake, and I'm sorry. I started Facebook, I run it, and I'm responsible for what happens here. If the thought process that went into building these applications, Facebook being the first of them to really understand it, that thought process was all about how do we consume as much of your time and conscious attention as possible. And that means that we need to sort of give you a little dopamine hit every once in a while um, because someone liked or commented on a photo or a post or whatever. And that's going to get you to contribute more content. And that's going to get you, you know, more likes and comments. And it's a, it's a, val it's a social validation feedback loop that, that it's like a, I mean, it's exactly the kind of thing that a, that a hacker like myself would come up with because you're exploiting a vulnerability in, in human psychology. And I just, I, th I think that we, you know, we, the inventors, creators, you know, and it's, it's me, it's Mark, it's the, you know, Kevin Systrom at Instagram, it's all of these people, um, understood this consciously and we did it anyway. Consumer internet businesses are about exploiting psychology. And that is one where you want to feel fast because, you know, people are unpredictable. And so we want to psychologically figure out how to manipulate you as fast as possible and then give you back that dopamine hit. We did that at, brilliantly at Facebook. Instagram has done it. WhatsApp has done it. You know, Snapchat has done it. Twitter has done it. So there are great examples. WeChat is doing it. There are great examples of Failing fast is the right path to exploiting psychology of mass populations of people. I think we all knew in the back of our minds, even though we feigned this whole line of like, there probably aren't any really bad unintended consequences. I think in the back, deep, deep recesses of our minds, we, we kind of knew something bad could happen. But I think the way we defined it was not like this. It literally is a point now where I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. That is truly where we are. And I would encourage all of you as the future leaders of the world to really internalize how important this is. If you feed the beast, that beast will destroy you. If you push back on it, we have a chance to control it and rein it in. And it is a point in time where people need to hard break from some of these tools and the things that you rely on. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. No civil discourse, no cooperation, misinformation, mistruth. And it's not an American problem. This is not about Russian ads. This is a global problem. 
Tell us, the, I love that analogy you made on 60 Minutes about the slot machine. Yep. That the phone is really a slot machine and every time people are checking, they want <clears throat> they want to get a, yep. some sort of goose. I mean, it's built into our brains of variable schedule rewards. So uh, if you pull a lever and sometimes you get a reward and sometimes you don't, sometimes you get a reward like you're invited to the Bill Maher show and sometimes you pull your lever and you get a newsletter on an email you want to throw away, uh, it makes it addictive. And so everything about our phone accidentally becomes a slot machine because it could be a text message from someone you love or it could be nothing. But uh, the more frequently it buzzes, the more it conditions us to check more. And so it's obviously leading to these kind of addictive problems that everybody feels. Turn it off. That's what I would say. It's, it's, it's hard for young people now because they're hooked. They're addicted. If you don't think you're addicted, and I'm talking about anyone, from the highest to the lowest, if you don't think you're addicted, then see if you can turn it off for a week. Got quiet in here, didn't it? <laughs> didn't it get real quiet? It's a tool, so we should use it. God has blessed us with free will. Now it's free will magnified, free will on steroids. You're free to go in any direction you want. It will allow you, and it's not the enemy. It's just a, ma it's, it's just a reflection of our own free will. You know? and, and we all want to be liked, but now we want to be liked by 16 million. And will now some of us do anything to be liked? We, we used to do anything to be liked, but it was the, by the person in front of you. Now it's to be liked by 16 million people that you don't know. We have to ask ourselves, what is the long-term, if not too, the short-term effect of too much information?